Greetings, Greetings fellow YouTuber. YouTuber, my name is Tim. YouTuber, my name is Tim. Welcome once again, as always, to the often imitated, never duplicated, and if you wanted to, my God, why have you no sense of decency? This is Gainer World Live. My name is Tim Gainer. Thank you so much for joining me. I certainly do appreciate it, as we appreciate it every single Friday night that you pop in and you join us. And uh, if this is your first time on this particular show, well, um, yeah, um, I'm sorry. Let me just apologize right there in advance. <laughs> because what is going to happen for the next hour is uh, really a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah, um, what we're doing right now is we are uh, just kind of hanging out with everybody, um, letting our hair down as we do every week about this time, and just talk about stuff. That's mainly what we do around here. We talk about stuff. I've got uh, all kinds of little news stories having to do with uh, entertainment and things of that nature. Um, and we, we ask people like you to, uh, to join us. It's just that simple. You can pop in and join us because we've got the chat right down there. It's right there. You see it? It's right there. You don't, you know, if you're watching live, why strain your neck all the way over there? You could like, you know, blow out ligaments. You know, and give yourself a migraine. Oh, no. We think about you, the viewer. That's why we put it right there. Right there. It's right there. And we will let you chat with us to your heart's content about um, anything that we talk about or anything that's on your mind for uh, the next hour or so. And speaking of the next hour or so, I do have to do this as I have to do it every single week. Um simply because, well, that's the kind of guy I am. Uh, right after this show, I would invite you, I encourage you, I implore you to head over to hugs at wrgg.com, H-U-G-S-A-T-W-R-G-G.com, where Cyrus Gray, America's favorite DJ, will be doing uh, the Hugs Top 10 Countdown. Yes, this is a station for independent and unsigned artists from around the world. And as a result of that, they have a two, Hugs 200 chart. They have the top 200 unsigned tracks uh, in the world. And Cyrus will be counting down the uh, the top 10 as he does that every week. So make sure you uh, head over there and join us, won't you? Hugs at WRGG.com. H-U-G-S-A-T-W-R-G-G.com. You'll be mighty glad you did because there's a lot of great music over there um, people that, um, people that deserve to be heard and, uh, we make a point of letting them be heard. So that's what that's all about. So yeah, um, it's another beautiful evening here in the great city of Chicago where, um, skies are kind of clouding up, might be a little bit of rain, but that's okay because it's a nice night. Uh, if you're watching us from the West coast, all I can say is I'm really sorry. Man, you want to talk about getting hit. Man, they're, they're talking in Phoenix. They're talking uh, the temperatures of like close to 120. That's crazy. I mean, I, re I, I but you know, it's a dry heat. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, you'll also notice something new. If you're a regular viewer to the show, that this, uh, this cool little, you know, the heart thing right there. Okay. I don't know what that's about. This is new in the realm of YouTube chat. And I guess it's something new that they put in. And I'm going to try this out for the first time to see what this does. So let me just take a, a laughing face and put that in. There. Oh, I see. Oh, it makes it all happy. And it's a party. Yay. It's a party. 
Okay, who was the <laughs> fine, outstanding human being at YouTube who came up with that? Yeah. Can't monetize us under 500 people, but yeah, boy, we can come up with this, can't we? This is money well spent. Uh, anyway, I um, want to start off with something that we just heard right about here, uh, right before we went on the air. As you know it, we've got a bullet. That's right. We have got a bulletin, bulletin, bulletin. Ty Pennington. Remember Ty? Yeah, Extreme Makeover. Great show. Bus driver, move that bus. And flip people's houses. And people would hate it. And you want to burn it to the ground. He's got his own show on HGD, on HGTV uh, these days. But uh, according to Entertainment Tonight, as of today, as of just a couple of hours ago, as a matter of fact, um... Ty is on the road to recovery after he uh, suffered a health scare. Uh, turns out that uh, he took to Instagram earlier today to share that he was in the ICU after developing an abscess that required surgery. So he posted a series of photos of himself in the hospital recovering from surgery after he, after, now get, how's this for being professional? He had just seen the pink, he had just been on the pink carpet for the Barbie, pre, for the f premiere of Barbie. Yeah, like we really need that in our lives. But Ty wrote, and this is a quote from Entertainment Tonight, or E.T. Uh, from the red carpet to the ICU, this last week has been interesting. I'm okay now, still recovering, but it felt, but I felt it looked weird that I hadn't posted with my team's. Uh, so freaking proud of everybody. We'll post that next to shed some light on what I, why I was MIA. Not that anybody really cared. Sunday, I hit the red carpet for the Barbie movie. Monday, flew to Colorado to start filming in Breckenridge. And Tuesday morning, woke up at 4 a.m. and could barely breathe. Turns out that the sore throat I've had for the last month was actually an abscess which had grown so large it was closing off my airwave. Uh, next thing I know, I was intubated and flown to the ICU in Denver. Wednesday, I had surgery. Yesterday afternoon, I was released from the ICU. So, yeah, that's kind of scary. It's kind of scary, Ty. Understand that. Uh, prioritizing his focus on his recovery. Yours as followers to pay attention to their health. Thank you so much, wrote Ty, according to Entertainment Tonight. Thank you so much for all the amazing staff at St. Anthony's in Lakewood, Colorado, and Summon Health in Frisco for taking such a good care of me. A great reminder to listen to your body when it's telling you something. So there, just that just in to our crack team, our crack entertainment team right here. Yes. Uh. Ty Pennington escapes death. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Sure, I understand. I understand. Uh, should we should we speaking of people escaping death, should we should we get into No, we'll wait on that. We'll wait on that. Now we'll do it now. Why not? Here. Hold on just a second. Might as well uh might as well get this together here. So as long as we're talking segways, let, let's talk segways, shall we? <laughs> sure. This thing is already. What are we? Nine minutes in, and already we're off the rails. Sounds like a plan. Um. So anyway, um. It came out. Uh, people speaking of people close to death. Madonna, again, um, on Monday said that all the North American dates of her upcoming tour will be postponed while she recovers from a multi-day hospitalization from a serious infection. This is according to Reuters. Um, she was supposed to kick it off this month in Vancouver, but now the plan is to start with the European leg in October. Uh, Live Nation has already said in that uh, new North American dates would be announced as soon as possible. 
and encourage fans to hold on to their tickets. Now, that's all well and good until you start getting into the rumor mill. Tim, what kind of rumor mill could there possibly be, I hear you asking? Well, turns out, um, according to In Touch magazine, that um, the, the, the Madge, the material girl, the vogued one, if you will, um, she has been accused of faking recent her her, fa- her recent uh, health scare to cover up the fact. This is according to In Touch magazine that apparently um, she's trying to cover up poor ticket sales. An insider told In Touch, "Quote: Her sickness is a ruse." And the real reason she canceled the tour is because her tour sales were dismal. Um, the last I heard, the last I heard, that tour was completely sold out. So you cannot lie to me about that stuff, okay? But people are trying anyway. People are trying to jump on the, the, the Madge bandwagon. Case in point, right before we went on the air, this came over to me from the mirror. Um, I guess there was some kind of a hoax, some kind of an online hoax going on, uh, a false headline that had been circulating with the line that reads, this is the end, Madonna clinically brain dead with no chance of recovery. Dude, look, I, you know, fun's fun and I enjoy a good joke too, but really? Come on, it's match. Come on now. Uh, The headline appeared in a screenshot and is made to look like an article published by TMZ. This is according to the Mirror. But no such article actually exists on their website. A fake article had an identical timestamp to a related article that TMZ did um, afterwards. Plus, the screenshot also uses the same header image as the real article. The only difference is the headline. So somebody obviously went to great lengths to try to... (laughs) The real headline, by the way, reads, Madonna's still too sick to get out of bed. Opening tours are uncertain. But now we we know that, uh, and again, according to to Reuters, that all North American tour dates for her upcoming post, or her upcoming tour, that is to say, have been postponed while she's, uh, she's still in recovery. So, yeah, all the best going out to the material, girl. You know, come on, Madge. You know, take your time, get better, do whatever you need to do. Um, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens from there. Okay, H- hang in there, honey. Hang in there. You're gonna be fine. We'll wait. We have no problem. We want to vote along with you, but you gotta be there. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, checking the tote board. Our favorite gay Irish teddy bear is right here with us, Carl Keegan. He's brain dead. Yes, she tweeted 24 hours after it happened. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, and, and if you joined us, you know that, you know, they're saying that the reason that she's sick is because poor ticket sales, and this thing's been sold out for a couple of months now. You know, so that's the way that that is. Also, Amy City Games popping in there, running late today, but I made it. Why is it that you always miss the good stuff? Just asking. Just asking. Anyway, um, I got ticket sales. I got your ticket sales to Cyrus Gray, who popped in before his show. I appreciate that. All righty then. All right. Well, if that's the case, if everybody's here in their places with sunshiny faces, then that only means one possible thing, and that it means that it is time for you to get your cards out. Oh, yeah, it is time. It is time to check up 
on the Deadpool. Let's check it out, y'all. Uh, to answer Carl's question, although you can't see it on the screen as of right now, no, it is not Tarot Card Night or Ouija Board Night. That's on Tuesdays. Um, and under the light of the full moon, of course. Peter Nero. You may not know that name, but you know his work. You know his work. He is a Grammy-winning piano player who would take pop songs and classify them up, jazzify them, if you will. Uh, he was also the Philly Pops conductor for about 30 years or so. He passed away yesterday at the age of 89. Uh, he died at his home care assisted living facility in Eustace, Florida, according to his daughter, Beverly Nero. Uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer reported services will be private for this. Uh, he, he was one of those guys that just, he would take some of the coolest stuff. Like, you know, he would take everything from like the Beatles, Bob Dylan, George Gershwin, Cole Porter. And he, and he would just put a classical, a combination of classical music and swing. And it was really quite cool. Um, he, he called the sound undefinable, which is true. Um, and he called it middle of the road. And he and he was unashamed, he was unashamed of, of it. Uh, he led the Philly Pops until 2013. Um, but the stuff that he did, he 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 wrote some amazing um, soundtracks. Uh, he won a Grammy Award. Um, he won a Grammy Award in 1961 for Best New Artist, as well as. Um, uh, best performance by an orchestra uh, for a record he did called The Colorful Peter Nero. Um, you know, he, he did some great soundtracks, too. Uh, as you can see here, Brian's song, uh, some, three, theme from the summer of um, 42, which he actually made the Billboard charts on uh, for 1971. In 1971, that is to say. Um, very talented composer. Yes, Carl, you're absolutely right about that. And he also wrote the score for... Um, uh, a, film in 1963 that Jane Fonda was in Sunday in New York he even made an appearance in the movie so yeah um, really kind of kind of a kind of a shame that this that this happened um, he, he was an amazing an amazing uh, composer and like I said he um, he um, was in the Philadelphia Pops Orchestra uh, he started the Philly Pops Orchestra, that is to say, uh, the year that Arthur Fiedler died. And he's credited with virtually inventing the modern version of Pops Orchestra in Boston. Nero, he, he revived it. So, yeah. So, um, kind of a shame. Sorry to hear that. Peter Nero, check your cards. Update them as will. The great Peter Nero, gone at the age of 79. That'll do it for the Deadpool for this week. <laughs> Uh, checking the tote board real fast because people are weighing in all over the place. Um, Carl saying Taylor Swift is the new Madonna in ticket sales. Uh, it, Taylor Swift just owns show. She she owns the music business right now. We all know that. Um, Tarot Tuesday, Ouija Wednesday. There you go. That, that that's start a club doing that. Um, but yeah, um, Carl's saying that more people have died. Simon popped in. Okay, Simon's here and Carl's here. All right, it's going to be one of those nights, I can tell. And it's a good thing, too, because we need a little bit of backup. And the reason that we need a little bit of backup, especially here in the States, is because as of this morning, um, Hollywood has shut down. 
Hollywood has shut down. If you haven't heard about this, strap in. This is going to be, um, yeah, the, the, there's no polite way to put this. This is, this is out of variety. SAG-AFTRA, the Screen Actors Guild, and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists announced yesterday they are on strike against the film and TV companies. Uh, they held their board meeting yesterday morning and voted unanimously to approve a strike recommendation. Um, according to Chief Negotiator Duncan Crabtree, Ireland. Yeah, okay. Um, he told the room of SAG actors and journalists union members should withhold their labor until a fair contract can be achieved. They have left us with no alternative. The strike began today. Um, yeah, and you're seeing all kinds of, you know, what, what, what can I tell you? This, this is what's going on on Hollywood Boulevard as of right now. There are people out striking. This is not a joke, folks. Hollywood has been shut down. Um, SAG after members are not allowed to work in any way, shape, or form. We'll get into that in a minute because we have the list of things that actors, TV, and screen actors cannot do as of right now. Um, and, and if you hear the you hear the, the music outside. We have the windows open here at the uh, Gainer World International Complex. So, it's party night. Um, yeah, according to uh, President Fran Drescher, Fran is saying, and this is a quote, we are being victimized by a very greedy empire. At some point, you have to say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. You people are crazy. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? If we don't stand tall right now, we are going to be in jeopardy. You cannot change the business model as much as it has been changed and not expect the contract to change too. I cannot believe how the studios plead poverty, that they lose money left and right, and then give hundreds of millions of dollars to their CEOs. It's disgusting. Shame on them. Now, you, you know that the, the Writers Guild is already on strike. Okay? So this is just in addition to everything that's going on right now. Um, what they're doing is they, they're holding out for, you know, pay increases, residual increases... Uh, caps on pensions, health contributions, audition protections, shortened series option periods, and a groundbreaking, again, this is from Variety, a groundbreaking AI proposal that protects actors' digital likenesses for SAG after members. Yes, gang, this is where we are. This is where we are right now. People are afraid that their likenesses are going to be used by AI. So that's what's going on. The last time this happened was back in 1980, by the way. And by 1980, what I mean is uh, all production, all production under SAG after TV and film contracts have been halted. Projects are in a standstill in both the U.S. and around the world, except in the UK, I need to be clear on this. They're they're still working on uh, Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers. I believe it's the Amazon Prime special. They're still working on that in the UK because that union is Equity, which is not affiliated with SAG-AFTRA. But it has been said that Equity is standing by in case they need to support their brethren. So, yeah, th this, is, this is big to-doings. This is big to-doings. As of right now, everybody is shut down. Now, let's say 
just for the heck of it, that you are, um, that you're an actor or an actress and you're with SAG-AFTRA, okay? Uh, my mother was with SAG-AFTRA. She was with uh, AFTRA, the American Federation of TV and Radio Artists. Um, so, so, so what does that mean for the actor? Well, what that means for the actor is that right now, they cannot do the following. Okay, this, uh, this, this is from the union. This is from SAG-AFTRA. Film and television productions have been shut down. But it goes way beyond that for the actor. Except, and this is from, this is from the edict from the union, according to Variety. Except as set forth in the notice to members regarding non-struck work, all covered services and performing work under the TV theatrical contracts must be withheld and are included, but not limited to, principal on-camera work, such as acting, singing, dancing, performing stunts, piloting on-camera aircraft, puppeteering, that's right, Jeff Dunham's out of a job as of right now, and performance capture or motion capture work. ADR looping, TV trailers. You can't do TV trailers. You can't do theatrical trailers. Keep that in mind. We'll cover that in a second. No voice acting. No voiceover work. No principal off-camera work. No singing. No narration, including audio descriptive services. No stunt work. No background work. No stand-in work. No photos or body doubles. No fittings, no, no rehearsals, no camera tests, no tours, no personal appearances, no promotion, period. No interviews, no conventions, fans expos, festivals, uh, for your consideration events. And again, we'll touch on that for a second. Um, award shows, junkets, podcast appearances. Okay, so my, you know, I guess trying to get Peter Dinklage to come on the show is shot until that's over. No social media, no studio showcases. No performing on a trailer for a struck production. So nobody's working anywhere. Okay, nobody's doing nothing. Now, what does this mean to you and me? What does this all mean? Again, first and foremost, all production has now been shut down. Okay? But again, I, you know, like Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, in the UK, that's equity. But there's always that possibility. This is going to hurt the networks. This is going to hurt all the streamers, all the Netflix people, the Amazon Prime people, because they're relying on that pipeline of completed shows to fill out the rest of the year. That schedule is now shot in the head. So there's, you know, second quarter, forget about it. Forget about it. Um, Netflix, people like Netflix, Disney, Paramount, Comcast, Warner Brothers, Discovery, Fox. All these companies are going to be worried about the analyst questions about what's going to happen. What's it going to take? What do we got to do? Um, on top of the writer's strike. So even if the actors could come back to work, they don't have any material to have. They don't have any material to work with because the writers are all on strike. Um, now, that's not enough. Think about this. Comic-Con is coming up. Comic-Con is coming up, and they have already been impacted. This, again, according to Variety. The major studio is saying they will not have the usual presence at Comic-Con. Why? Because you won't have any of the actors there to promote their stuff. 
So all the Marvel, all the you know the the, the Marvel universe stuff, the DCU, the DCU stuff, forget it, forget it. We were joking earlier about Ty Pennington being at the Barbie premiere. That was right before the deadline. And that's pretty much the last premiere, the last promotion thing that you're going to see. Speaking of which, something to think about, and that is that all the summer movie promotions. Barbie, Oppenheimer, Mission Impossible 7, all the big studio blockbusters that we knew were going to come out, all of them with that large-scale, heavy campaigning and for your consideration promotions, not going to happen. Not for right now, anyway. Um, as a matter of fact, the cast of Oppenheimer had a premiere in London scheduled. And right before the premiere started, the entire cast got up and left because of the strike, because they thought it was, uh, because they thought that the uh, strike was going to happen. TV shows? Okay, let's think about that. Let's say that you're in the U.S. You're a late night kind of person. You, you know, you like Stephen Colbert. You like Jimmy Kimmel. You know, you like Jimmy Fallon. Guess what? Uh-uh. They cannot perform. They are members of AFTRA. So everything pretty much at this moment is shut down. And it remains to be seen how long this is going to happen. But I guarantee you, I I guarantee you, this is not going to be an overnight thing. This is not going to be an overnight thing. And the consequences, if I remember from the last strike in 80, it will be far-reaching. Um, let's see. Boy, a lot of people chiming in on this one. Um, they can't shut down Mr. Bean, want to bet? No, that's true, because that is UK. That is true. Uh, Black Mirror Strikes Again. See, episode Joan is awful. <laughs> okay. I can live with that. Um, let's see. Mimes. What about the mimes? Yeah, they're, they're out too, because, you know. And I think that's bad because, as as we all know, a mime is a terrible thing to waste. Um, is Gainer World heading into shutdown? Nope, I'm non-union. <laughs> I'm with the musicians' union. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Gave up my aftercard a little while ago. Um, William Shatner will break that line. <laughs> Walk through his... Listen, I just don't care. Uh, Noreen Henry popping in to say hi. Hi, Noreen. Always good to see you. Time to break out the VHS and those golden oldies. Yeah, sweating to the oldies. That's always a good idea. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh-huh. I ain't no scab. I ain't no scab. I'm strictly non-union, brother. Yep. If they, if they need me to sit in on the view, I got no problem with it. Hair's long enough, you know. I'll I'll be their token. I'll be their token TG. Literally, <laughs> think about it. Um, speaking of actors, um, speaking of actors, uh, there has been an, we got a we've got an update here on a story we've been following for a few months, um, and happening right here. Uh, real quick, here we go. Um, we'll get into this in just a second. Amy City is saying, just lock Shatner into the room with the executives and have him nonstop do his cover of Lucy in the Sky with diamonds until they crack. <laughs> yeah, between that and his cover of Rocket Man, you know. Uh, I think I just threw up a little in my mouth. There's been a Jamie Foxx sighting. 
here in the great city of Chicago. Uh, Jamie was seen over the weekend. He it was out and about. And as a matter of fact, he was spotted on Sunday boating along the mighty Chicago River. This is according to Vulture and TMZ. Um, he was doing well enough. But um, he, he, was, he was seeing a couple of people uh, were able to catch him on their phones. And he said that uh, he's, he, he's, he told them that we're doing great. They're, we're doing great, he said. Um, as a matter of fact, this city, or I beg your pardon, here in the city, in the great city of Chicago, a uh, great paper, the Chicago Tribune, is weighing in and saying that um, that over the weekend, Jamie even helped a woman find a lost purse. Um, a new report from U.S. Weekly is saying that he's still not 100%, but... A lot of people are saying that he's doing okay. In fact, he even told the woman when he gave her back the purse that uh, he was feeling good. He was feeling good. A uh, source told uh, Us Weekly, and this is a quote, Jamie is doing so much better and he's starting to feel like himself. He's not 100% and he's still taking things easy, but he's definitely on the road to recovery. Um, he is in a rehab center in downtown Chicago. That much I can tell you. Um, and there's really not a whole heck of a lot more that can be said than that right now. Except that his family is here as well, rooting him on. But here's the, here's the thing. And, and I don't know whether to take this with a grain of salt or what. I, I'm not even sure I want to take this at all. But... The fact of the matter is, is that um, even, even, I mean, nobody knows why he was hospitalized. They just said it was a major medical event. And everybody's keeping mum about this. The, I mean, the, the, the Fox family right now is being more tight-lipped than, this is a greater secret than the formula for Coca-Cola. Let's face it. The man is out in public, and we still don't know what was wrong with him. But now comes word or statement from Mike Tyson, of all people, who said, and this is, I guess this can be taken to some extent because He's, he, Jamie was working with Mike because he's supposed to play Mike in, in an upcoming film. But he said during an appearance at the PVD broadcast in May that Jamie may have suffered a stroke. I'm inclined to believe that given where he is right now. And given the fact that people are barely saying anything about it. But, you know, here you have it. Here you have it. He's out on a boat. He's having fun. See Jamie Foxx out on a boat. See Jamie Foxx playing on a moat. Um, Mike said, they said stroke. I have no idea what happened to him. If we don't know about it by now, they don't want us to know. Yeah, you think? But, yeah. So, you know, we, we, keep, we keep giving respective good wishes to Jamie. Hope you're okay soon, my man. Um, you know, glad you're in Chicago. Sorry it's for this reason. But, um, yeah. At least we know that he's doing well enough that, you know, he's, he's out and about. Sailing by the Lyric Opera House <laughs> Underneath the Wells Street Bridge 
Uh, <coughs> was it the Wendella, Jamie? I need to know that. Because that's a lot of fun. If you're taking that tour, I don't blame you. That can be a lot of fun on a Sunday. Uh, checking the tote board real fast. Uh, Amy City said, was it live or was it Memorex? Oh, AI. Okay, I get it. Yeah, that's the new one, isn't it? Is it live or is it AI? Um, <laughs> and again, people that uh, are barely escaping death and um, just don't want to believe that they should really be <laughs> taking their time with things. Uh, Brave Words has come out and said that um, Ozzy Osbourne, you remember Oz, don't you? Yeah, he had to cancel his U.S. tour because of back pain. And he needed to go into rehab. But he was supposed to be on this power trip concert festival in October in Indio, California. With all of these great metal acts, kind of like the Desert Trip you know, back a few years ago. Ozzy was going to do that in October, but has now pulled out of the festival. Um, he, he tweeted to let everybody know the obvious, which, which was, should I do my Ozzy imitation right about here? I ask myself, anytime I talk about Ozzy, I really have to resist the urge to do an imitation of him. Just saying. But saith, saith the Ozman, as painful as this is, I've had to make the decision to bow out of performing on Power Trip in October. My original plan was to return to the stage in the summer of 2024. When the offer to do this show came in, I optimistically moved forward. Unfortunately, my body is telling me that I'm just not ready yet, and I'm much too proud to have the first show that I do in nearly five years be half-assed. So, okay, you know, I mean, he's he's being honest about it. You know, if you can't do it, Oz, you can't do it, you know. Uh, I want to thank my fans, my band, and my crew for their unconditional loyalty and continued support. I love you all. We'll see you soon. God bless, Ozzy. Uh, so that leaves an empty spot for Power Trip, doesn't it? Oh, no. Turns out Judas Priest is going to be sitting in for him. That's a pretty doggone good replacement, if you ask me. Ozzy said that uh, they're personal friends of his. And I can, prom I can promise you, you won't be disappointed. The Prime is really fine flag for heavy metal at this prestigious festival. That's actually Rob Halford that said that. He wrote that on Instagram. We're ready to raise double horns way up high together, keeping the metal faith at this Boston one-of-a-kind power trip world event. So Ozzy's back on the shelf. Jamie Foxx is on the shelf. Madonna's on the shelf. <laughs> What's next? They're all dropping like flies. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely crazy. Um, let me know. I, you know, what are you thinking about all this? You know, I, I, I even, I, do you even pay attention to, to Ozzy anymore? Does anybody? You know, do you care if the writers are on strike? Do you care if the actors are on strike? Apparently it did because there was just all kinds of comments here. So, yeah. Kind of, kind of interesting how y'all bopped out on that one. Um, I, I love this next story. I literally love this next story. Uh, you might remember when uh, the great Aretha Franklin, the late great Aretha Franklin, Lady Soul herself, when she passed away in 2018, everybody, her family, her agents, her record company, everybody was just flipped out because there was no will. Aretha allegedly did not have a will when she passed away. 
That has changed. That has changed, according to the Detroit Free Press. Because, apparently, a document that was handwritten by Aretha herself and was found under a couch cushion turns out this has been contested, but according to the Detroit Free Press, it has been it has been deemed a legal document and a valid will. This was decided by a jury on Tuesday afternoon. It was a six person jury that capped a two day trial in Oakland County Probate Court because due to her I guess people have just been battling over her estate, which I believe is, is valued at something like thirty million dollars. Um the jury deliberated for less than an hour. And Key Cal Franklin on hand with uh, three of his children, her grandchildren, Aretha's grandchildren, were jubilant after the verdict, according to the, according to the Detroit Free Press. Try saying that three times fast. Um, so he stands in because, I mean, let's face it, the, the boy's going to, he's about to clean up, okay? <coughs> Now, there's one last step because Judge Jennifer Callahan apparently has two wills in hand. One is a four-page 2014 document that was validated Tuesday by the jury as being an actual valid will. And an earlier 11-page document from 2010 that was already agreed by Aretha's sons to be a will as well. So now the judge has got to decide if the 2014 document revokes the 2010 entirely or just in part. Oh my. Oh my, oh me, oh my. These are two handwritten documents. That Aretha wrote and stuffed one under the couch. Wow. Jurors heard closing arguments from attorneys Tuesday following Monday's testimony that focused on part on the Queen of Soul's signature, A. Franklin, with a smiley face toward the bottom of the 2014 papers. White's attorney did not dispute the signature's authenticity but rather its placement on the page, saying it was merely a reference to some notes in the text. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't see Aretha doing smiley faces. But Craig Smith, an attorney for Edward Franklin, pointed to the 2014 document's opening line in which Aretha Franklin wrote in part, Being of sound mind, I write my will and testament. Smith told the jury... She's speaking from the grave, folks. This is my will. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Smith said they'll be playing respect 300 years from now. Franklin's other key asset, her music royalties, the 900-pound gorilla, they called it. And the 2014 document calls for that money to be split evenly among the children. So yeah, um, I guess there's I, I guess this isn't completely over, but it's good to know that there is an end in sight, and there's a lot of money involved. A lot of money. I mean, thirty million dollars. All the royalties. Just the royalties. Um. <laughs> Cyrus says, the Ouija speaks. But it's not Ouija Wednesday. It's not Tarot Tuesday. <laughs> Here they come. MUC is saying, they better think, think, think about what they're trying to do to her state. That's right. Okay. Enough of that. 
All right, you guys in the mood to sing? You guys in the mood to have some fun? You guys in the mood to do something completely off the wall? <coughs> you guys ready to do something that hasn't been done before? You guys ready to party? How about... How about... I thought that's what we were doing. Well, yeah, that's true. But I mean even more so. Even more so. Am I playing a track? No. Uh, Shambhala by Three Dog Night. I've thought about that, believe me. Um, no. No. What we're going to do is do something... Will there be party hats? There could be. There very well could be. Because you know, it's always a good time at Barry's Malibu Dream House. That's right. And you can be a part of this. You can actually be a part of this. I couldn't kid you about stuff like this, gang. That's right. The reality of the situation is <laughs> yeah, y'all got the right idea. Work with me here for a sec. This is again out of variety. Today. Beginning Monday. Beginning Monday. July 17th. 2023 A.D. in the year of our Lord. Amen. Fans can officially rent the Malibu Barbie Dream House on Airbnb as hosted by Barbie's main squeeze, Ken, who, as we all know, in the movie is being played by Ryan Gosling. That's right, kids. Ken is trading in his rollerblades and surf shorts to offer fans a one-of-a-kind experience this July at the life-size toy-inspired mansion, proving, again, this is variety speaking, not me, Inspire, proving that he's more than just Ken. I'm pretty sure he's just Ken. But yeah, on, uh, on Monday, July 17th, 2023 AD, in the year of our Lord, amen, beginning at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is noon here in the great city of Chicago, 1 p.m. in um, New York, or um, that would be 6 p.m. GMT, 1800 GMT. Everyone, and I do mean everyone in Barbie land will be able to request to book Ken's room in Barbie's dream house at airbnb.com slash Ken dream house. You can get two individual one night stays for up to two guests. Selected winners will stay at the Pink Mansion in Malibu on July 21st and 22nd. So, if, you know, don't make any plans for next weekend, okay? You'll be able to stay there in Malibu free of charge to indulge in all of the Kennergy. See what I did there? <laughs> the Kennergy that revamped Beach House has to offer. Ken said, via press release, Look, I'm just reading this out of variety, okay? Ken said, we all have dreams, and Barbie is lucky enough to have a house full of them. But now it's my turn, and I can't wait to host guests inside this one-of-a-kind, dare I say, one-of-a-can digs. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth. Uh, the newly renovated Malibu Dreamhouse sports Barbie's signature pink polish, this time with a revamped Kennergy. Upon their stay, guests will indulge in the opportunity to look through Ken's wardrobe, 
learn line dancing on the outdoor disco floor, <laughs> engage in a beach off, that's beach off, by the infinity pool, and take home an exclusive piece of the kendom. Oh my God, I'm making myself sick just reading this. With a set of yellow and pink Impala skates and surfboards. Uh, Ken's hosting commemorates the July 21st release, of course, of Barbie. Um, that's going to star Margot, uh, Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, America Ferrara, Kate McKinnon, Issa Rae, Rhea Perlman, Will Ferrell. There goes the plane overhead to take you off to Barbie's dream house. Uh, <laughs> and to celebrate the release, if this isn't enough for you, you, th- you think that you think you got it bad. Oh no, there, there's more to celebrate the release. Airbnb will make a one-time donation to save the children, which now this is cool. This is cool. I think this is a great idea. Uh, Airbnb will make a one-time donation to save the children to provide learning resources and support to children, families, and communities uh, in support of girls confidence. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, there you have it. You, you yourself. If you're in search of the perfect Barbie core destination, I'm reading this out of Variety. Variety actually had the cojones to print this for their subscribers. If you're in search of the perfect Barbie core destination on Airbnb right now, um, it's, it's in Indio, California. It sports a Dream Lake house aesthetic. It's a stunning home with a hot tub and pool. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Are you ready to party? Are you ready to party? Come on, gang. Sing along with me. details has made available although i don't think we'll be uh following that (laughs) we we won't be following that show we won't be following that um but then again you know hollywood's on strike right now they gotta do something for promotion why not just let everybody live in little pink houses for you and me if i can steal one from john mellencamp so (laughs) But anyway, that is going to do it from here right now. Rush over quick like a bunny. Rush over right now quick like a bunny to hugs at WRGG.com. H-U-G-S-A-T-W-R-G-G.com where Cyrus Gray is getting ready to march into the studio at the Hugs International Complex in Connellsville, Pennsylvania and give you the Hugs Top 10 Countdown for the week. He will appreciate it. I will appreciate it. And so will a lot of unsigned artists who are trying desperately to get their music heard. Um, people like you that need to hear it and they want you to hear it. So that's what's going on there. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. It is time for the scanner to get up and go. Thank you so much. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Remember, we're on the drive for 500 subscribers. We're over 100. Gotta love it. Like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. In other words, if you like it, (laughs) you know what to do. We'll see you next week. We are home!